Now it's happening in other country, not here, but in other country. Country is so well developed. Country is so civilized. They said that Muslim women cannot dress according to their religious right anymore. They should dress like they. They should dress like them. Now they are stopping us to dress in the religion, in the belief that we we believe in. This is our code of dress. They said no. But we never stop anyone who is in our country to dress any way you like. If you are a Buddhist, you want to wear the yellow robe, you wear. If you want to wear white, you wear white. You want to wear black, you wear black. But of course, you must wear something. If you don't wear everything, it's too bad. Bad for you and bad for everybody. But we are never false on you because why? Because we believe in justice. We believe in the total freedom. But for the Muslim, you are bind to the Sharia. Because why? Because we are not just going to be safe in this world. We want to be safe in the hereafter by following the Sharia of Allah in this world. You are sure to get Allah's blessing because Allah will accept it. The only thing that Allah don't accept, He said, "Wa man yabtaghi ghair al Islam adina, falain yuqbal minhu, wa huwa fil akhirati min al khasirin." Whoever do not accept the Islamic law, he accept the other law. Then, in a day of judgment, Allah will not accept whatever he have done. But if he accept the Islamic law, Allah will be pleased with him like how he is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. Do you understand what I'm trying to share with you, brothers? Do you know what is Islam and secular now? If you pray five times a day and in the same time you gamble or you drink and when people say, why you drink? Eh, this is... This is dunya. Prayer, akhirah. Akhirah and dunya do not mix. That is secular. Dunya is a platform for you to achieve akhirah. When you say, it's okay, you know, no. I pray five times a day. Some Muslim, they pray only once in the week. They are the Friday Muslim. But you have some who are worse than that. They have some Muslim only pray twice in a year. Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha. Na'unzu billahi min azza. What can you do, brother? Our brother, our family is doing that. What is the difference between you and the kuffar? You are their brother. You live like them, you act like them, you talk like them, you dress like them. You are not proud to be a Muslim. You should be proud to be a Muslim. You should be blessed to be a Muslim. This is to tell us where we say you must ask yourself, brother. It's very important. You see, a lot of people are very confused. They say, no, brother, in my country, sometimes I see people, you know, they go to Hajj to fulfill their five, the last pillar of Islam. I told them, 25 years, 30 years ago, in my country, when my people, the Chinese, look into a person, a Muslim who just came back from Mecca, they respect them highly. They honor them. They say, oh, these are good people. Their heart is very clean. It's like the dress, so pure, so white, and the turban, so white. They say, these people like saints. If you have problems, see him. He will solve your problem. They respect these people who came back from Hajj 25, 30 years ago. But today, whoever came back from Hajj, they say, this, uh, he, he is not a real Haji. They know the value now. Because he said, he go to Hajj two times, three times, but he still owe me just $1,000 he don't pay me. He lied to me. He cheat me in a business. And but he go to Hajj. When I ask him, where is my the money that you loan, you borrow from me? I have no money, sorry. Next time. But he have money to go to Hajj. And then come back, where is the money? Next time he go for Umrah again. Astaghfirullah. This is your responsibility with your fellow mankind. You borrow some money from them, you must pay them. Even they are not yet Muslim because 
Borrowing is borrowing. This is very important. Maybe you have some Muslim have wrong idea. If you borrow with the Muslim, you take a loan from the Muslim, you must pay. But if you take a loan from the not yet Muslim, you don't have to pay. Who teach you this? Did the Prophet Muhammad taught us this? No. A borrow, a loan is a loan. Allah said it's hot. It's true. Islam is the only religion that he recognized. He accepts whoever choose other than Islam, Allah will not accept anything from him. But today we are so confused. When we have our problem, we bring our problem to the other system to judge us. We are Muslim. When you claim yourself as Muslim, you must follow the Sharia. You don't use secular system anymore. I have a friend who's a businessman. He has a, a grocery shop. One day I visit him. I was shocked because he opened the shop yeah, in the middle of the Muslim community. A lot of Muslims go to the shop and buy things from this shop. So I went to his shop, into his room one day. I saw so many Islamic books about fiqh, about fiqh. Our, I thought that he was a Muslim. I said, are you a Muslim? You have been hiding and uh, with the low profile, you, are, you dare not explain to people that you are Muslim. You are shy that people know you are Muslim. He said, no, 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 no. He said, Mr. Yi, I'm not a Muslim. I'm still a Chinese. But my daughter is a Muslim. Why? Because I convert her daughter. He said, my daughter is a Muslim, but not me. But I'm going through this book of fiqh. Why? Because I want to know whether there is a law in Islam said that if the Muslim take a loan from the non-Muslim, they don't have to pay. I said Islam is a very fair religion. A loan is a loan. Then he opened another book. He find, he looked in the book of Hadith. A loan is a loan, you must pay. To the extent the Prophet said, Man ada adainan falayan wi qada'aw fa huwa sarq. Whoever take a loan have no intention to pay, he's a thief. Then he opened another book. What is the book? His book. Not the fiqh book anymore, his book. Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahim, Omar, Ali, Abu Bakr. All the beautiful names, the name of the Khulafa i Rashidin. 200 ringgit. Not yet paid, three months already. This one, 500 ringgit. Not paid six months already. A lot of so called the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad is owing this man who is doing a halal business and they are not paying him. If you say you love Allah, you love yourself, there's no other way except you must come back to the teaching of Allah, the saying of the Prophet, and you must bring up your family in the Islamic way. Even we are living in the secular country, but you have the right to exercise your Islamic ritual and you have the right to implement Islamic Sharia within yourself, inshallah. We do not 
encourage anybody to go and fight for that you don't have to fight you just got to do inshallah allah will help you in tansrullah yansurkum if you help to uphold the teaching of islam within yourself your family your community allah is sure to help you when you start bit aqdamakum and he will sit fast your sta- your station wherever you are inshallah may allah bless us may allah guide us may allah strengthen our iman and may allah make us among Abdan Shakura, the person who are thankful to Allah that you are living in this kind of situation where the government gives you your freedom to exercise your religion and if you want the divine law, the Islamic law you ask yourself when can I exercise, reinforce the Islamic Sharia to myself, to my family, to my neighbor inshallah if you do that, may Allah bless you one of the last things I'd like to share with you See what the Prophet always encourage us. The Prophet said, after you become a believer, become a good example. After you become a good believer, be a good example to others. That's why Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi If you believe in Allah in the day of judgment, if you want to say anything, make sure you are saying what is good, what is benefit to you and others. If not, silent is better. وَمَنْ قَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْآخِرِ فَلَيُقْرِمْ جَارَهُ Whoever believe in Allah and the day of judgment, you must honor the right of your neighbor. Whether he is Muslim or not yet Muslim, you must honor their right. You must be kind and caring and loving to them. And the Prophet said, فَمَنْ قَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْآخِرِ فَلَيُقْرِمْ دَيْفَهُ And whoever believe Allah and the day of judgment, you must honor your guests, whether your guest is a Muslim or not yet Muslim, they are your guests. You must respect them and honor them. May Allah strengthen our iman and may Allah give us hidayah and may Allah open the heart of all Muslims and also the heart of the people who are not yet Muslim to understand this deen, that this is the best sharia, the best deen for all humanity. Wa billahi tawfiqi wa al-akhri da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جزاك الله برادر حسيني. Now we would have the open question and answer session on the topic Islam and secularism. We have three mics arranged in the ground, one in the front next to the stage, as well as one in the rear section for the brothers and one mic on my right in the rear for the sisters in the ladies section we would have questions asked in a clockwise rotation first on the mic next to the stage then the one behind and the last question in the ladies section we request our questioners to kindly ask your questions on the topic be brief and to the point and you may ask only one question at a time Kindly state your name and profession before putting forward your question so that the speaker can give you a more appropriate response. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. My name, my name is Abdul Rahman. Uh, I am an engineering student. Brother Hussain, as we can see in today's uh, world, that careerism and materialism, the blind consumerism is growing fast in our population, our uh, India, basically in this nation. So I would like to ask you that uh, how would you relate consumerism and this careerism to Islam and secularism? To Islam and secularism? Yes, sir. Is there a secular in Islam? No, how would you try to retaliate careerism or consumerism with respect to Islam and secularism, I would like to ask you that. Okay, we talk about career, about a film star or a singer or anybody. You can be anything as long as what you do do not go against Islam. As long as you are promoting the right thing. By doing all this promotion, or you become the model and so on, make sure that you do not go against the Sharia. You cannot just wear half naked and then uh, promote something. 
even that is your career, that career is un-Islamic. Any work that is un-Islamic, that teach you to go against the Sharia, you must try your level best to stop and make a short hijrah from that haram kind of career to an Islamic career. Do you understand, brother? Yes, yes, sir. I give you another example. You may look for a man, a muscular man, to act in a movie. And they want this man, he get a Muslim, or he get Mustafa. He's a bodybuilder. And now he wants Mustafa to come in and dress only like the Superman dress, using underwear, no other dress except underwear, and pose as a muscular, fighting against the enemy in the movie. Now, how can you do that? Allah loves you to be a strong Muslim, but He do not want you to go out to the stage and half naked and show people your muscle. Even you say, this is nothing, this is advertisement, this is for show. No, it's still haram. When you open your aura in front of the public, it's haram. You understand, brother? Yes, yes, brother. You are not supposed to trade your career with Islam. Islam is more valuable than your career. Okay, then you talk about terrorism? No, no, no he don't talk about terrorism. They know about terrorism. No, not terrorism, consumerism. Ah, consumerism again. What kind of consumer are you referring to? The various uh, modern products in our market today. Any product is halal, is halal, no problem. Any halal business you can get involved in, you have no problem. Whatever you want to consume, as long as it's halal, alhamdulillah. Yeah, no, because uh, many people are simply using things when they actually don't need it. Oh. They, they don't use it in their homes. And simply yet, because okay. some celebrities are uh, doing advertisements for those. So they are uh, buying them okay, and brother. keeping them in their houses. No, Zakan, that means you are be talking about people who are overspending. Mubazir, I mean, things that is not necessary. But because they have money, they can buy anything for decoration. For But of course, in Islam, whatever you do, moderation is the best. Khairul Umur also. I do not say that you cannot decorate your house. You cannot have an expensive car. It's no problem. You remember the Prophet Sallallahu did uh, one day was asked by a man he said because when the prophet said la yadkhulu janna man kana fi qalbihi zarrata min qibr a person who have even a seed of an atom of kibir in his heart will not enter paradise so the sahaba one of the sahaba was shocked he said how about people who like to dress with expensive dress and wear expensive shoes they, call, they buy all these expensive things. Whether they wear it or not, but they buy all these expensive things. Is that considered as kibir, haram in Islam? The Prophet said, Inna Allah jamil yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful. He loves beautiful things. If you can wear expensive trousers, expensive shirt, as long as you pay zakat, you, are, you help the poor, you for, don't forget the... The, the poor and the needy, the fuqara wa masakin, alhamdulillah, anything extra is a ni'mah from Allah. I give you an example. Do you think a du'a like us can come down with a helicopter and give da'wah here? Something is good. In the future, we hope that when you have this kind of function, all the scholars will not come by road anymore, by air. They'll come by helicopter. Can we use helicopter? If you have the money, why not? Can you drive a sport car? Can I drive a sport car, brother? Yes. Why not? If I have the means, I can drive Ferrari and come and stop here, and I can walk up and give you salam. Is that wrong? You go, you go to the mosque with a Ferrari? No. It's okay. As long as it's halal, and you get your income from a halal income, and you have paid up the zakat, inshallah, that is your right. No problem. But any mubazir, if you always do things overdo, you become the friend of shaitan. May Allah save us from mubazirin. Faddal. Jazakallah. Yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Farzana Kazi. My question is, in Islam, five times salah is compulsory for all Muslims. Naam. But we are staying in a secular country. 
when we Muslim ladies go out of our house for regular work, we do not have any place for salah, even in our mosque. Many times we miss our salah. Today I miss my Maghrib salah before reaching here. What should we do? First thing, the sister should pray your Maghrib now. Yeah. You should pray your Maghrib before you join the crowd. But anyhow, as a Muslim, you, we have been taught to be always prepared. When you leave your house, the Muslim is always prepared. If you have a place like the mosque, then the sister asked a very important point here. She said, even the mosque, she finds difficulty to pray. Maybe there are mosques here that the men do not allow the woman to enter and perform the prayer. It's how can you stop the woman from going to the mosque, brothers? Who gives you the authority to do that? It's haram for you to do that. Don't ever do that. Of course, the Prophet never encouraged the woman, but you are facing a different situation now. In the time of the Prophet, most of the women stay home. They don't have to work because the man will work very hard. The man is a protector. He is there to serve you. No, you are like a queen. But today the man is Naunzubillah. No, they become a king now. They don't know what they want the woman to go out and work. What can we do? This kind of man, you have this kind of man around you. I hope that this is not the man that I'm talking about. All these are real men, not half men. Yeah. But anyhow, please remember, never forbid or stop any Muslim entering a mosque, whether male or female, by right. If you are a responsible husband or a responsible man of the mosque, the caretaker of the mosque, you should make sure there is an area for the woman to come in and perform namaz. Secondly, sisters, I became a Muslim almost from 1968. Now how many years? 39 years. Alhamdulillah. I now miss my prayer. Even wherever I travel, wherever I go, even when I'm working, I'm, I'm working in, the, in Europe as in the factory, I find time to pray. I always find time to pray. I, have to, I just find a corner and know where my qibla, I make salah. There's no problem. But maybe we are not used to it. For the woman, they, are more, they have more things to do. So maybe they, they need a more secure area. But you can pray in your office. Sister, you can even pray in your office. Wherever there's a small corner that you think you can make rakat and sujud, you can do it there. I used to do it in any place I, I, I go. Then when the people say, Why, what are you doing? I'm praying. For what? I say, I'm praying, ask Allah to bless me and to bless everybody and make you have a good business. Don't you like that? They say, oh, it's good. Okay, pray, pray, pray. So don't worry, sister. But please remember, brother, please, you see the sister is asking you. He is telling you that what happened to them when you forbid them from performing prayer in the mosque, where do you think they want to go to pray? So may Allah make things easy for you, sis. Yeah? So if possible, after this, you may, may better perform your Maghrib prayer. Zakallahu khair. Yes, brother. I'm Sohil Dawe coming from Vadodara, Gujarat state. Sir, I'm born in Hindu family and supported by the one Arab of the Saudi Arabia a few years back. With, with his support, I grown up to this level. And it's my nature that I am giving uh, full importance and uh, present and uh, all the religion present in this world, whether it is Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai, or maybe Parsi. Recently, I gone to the Vipassana, which is uh, nearest to the Buddhism. And I'm uh, always in my nature that I always getting good principles and good things from the each and every religion existed in this world, whether it is Islam, whether it is the other things also. Nowadays, I am uh, getting good principles, good lessons from the uh, Islam right now. Sir, main thing is that uh, those who are new entrants or new are learning the good principle of the any religion, getting good difficulties from the maybe his own family, maybe his own you know, culture. No. Sir, I want to know that from your own experience that uh, as, as the speaker has said that uh, you are first following Buddhism, then you turn to the Islamism. Sir, from your own experience, we want to know that, especially I want to know that, what type of difficulties you face and which remedies you have applied to the these things and overcome this situation so that we can get the good knowledge of this kind. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Zakallahu khair. Yes, when I become a Muslim, 
I have the fear towards my mom, not for my sibling, because my sibling, they are very open-minded. In our family, Chinese family, you have everybody. You have people who believe in Taoism, people who are Buddhism, people who have no ism, they are free thinker, and you have people, Christian, my sister is a Christian. But when they become Muslim, they are very open. As long as you know what is good for you, carry on. I only worry about my mother, because my father passed away before I became a Muslim, very young. He passed away in 1962, and I became Muslim in 1968. Yeah, I have the fear because I do not know how to explain to my mother. But Alhamdulillah, after becoming Muslim, I learned about Islam. Then my scholar, my imam, always said, you must go back. Go back to your family. Talk to them. If they ask you, tell them. I'm worried. I'm scared that they will beat me up, you know. Because my mother used to beat the children. Even when you are so big, he'll still beat you. But Alhamdulillah, when I went back, I asked Allah to protect and give guidance to her. Then, of course, she loved me. I'm the youngest son, yeah? the youngest boy in the family. So she's worried that she will lose a son. I said, Mom, no, I am still your son. I'm back here. I'm your son. I'm a Chinese boy. I'm still Chinese. I'm not an uh, Arab. Even the Arab also don't accept me if I become Muslim as an Arab. You know? The Malay don't accept me as a Malay. I see, I'm still a Chinese. I cannot change my race. The only thing that's different is that I believe in Allah now. That's all. But she can't differentiate between Islam and the people. You see, a lot of people worry because they do not know how to differentiate between the Muslim and Islam or race and religion. So I got to make them understand. After they understand, Alhamdulillah, brother. I show them the good example. I'm very kind to them now. I never raise up my voice in front of my mother after I become Muslim. Before I'm Muslim, if she said one word, I disagree, I will shout at her. A word for a word. Everybody have right. You can shout at me, I can shout at you. That is my style before I'm a Muslim. But when I become a Muslim, I don't do that anymore because Islam said haram for you to raise up your voice in front of your parents. You cannot even say, Uf, wala tanhar huma. So I don't do that anymore. And my mom see the changes in me. That I become a better person. Then I asked my mom when she was cooled down and she's okay. I said, Mom, what, who do you prefer? You prefer I before I become a Muslim or after I become a Muslim? Now she's very happy that I become a Muslim. She's proud that I become a Muslim. You must show good example to them. You must be honest and sincere to them. Show them that you love and you care for them, even they are not yet Muslim. But Alhamdulillah, two years ago, my mother was very sick, and then I used to talk to her about Islam. She was staying with my sister, who is a strong Christian. Alhamdulillah, we have no problem between the family. They love me to the extent that if I go back to my sister's house, she have a refrigerator, a fridge, halal fridge for me. One haram for her and one halal for me. Alhamdulillah, no, when you respect your religion, when you love Allah and follow the way of the Prophet, Allah will make things easy for you. Allah said, if you have are obedient to me, I will make things easy for you. So that's the only thing you have to do. You must show good example to them. Alhamdulillah, before my mother passed away, I managed to invite her to say, La ilaha illallah shahada. And she made the declaration and after a while she passed away. So may Allah forgive her. And accept us, say, MashaAllah. Yeah? It's a long story. If I share with you, it will take another three hours. May Allah bless us. Just don't pray, don't forget to pray for my other sibling, my sisters. Yeah, my brother, they are not yet Muslim. Even we try to talk to them about Islam, but they love me. And I love them too for the sake of Allah. I hope that they will become a Muslim. Every time I say, when you want to become Muslim, uh, I know you love me if I come to Islam. But no, not yet, not yet. You know, because I love to eat a lot of haram food still, is it? I say haram food is not a big problem for us. You make shahada first. Oh, shahada is not yet, is it? Of course. Yeah, we believe what the Allah said to Prophet Muhammad. Innaka la tahdi man ahbabta, yahdi mayasha. We cannot give hidayah to whom we like. Because hidayah from Allah, our duty wa ma'alayna illa al-bala. Our duty is to convey. May Allah bless us. And may Allah bless the brother here and guide us all. Amin.
big sound great quality one name big sound great quality one name